Hello, uh, welcome to the fourth module of this uh, course mechanics of fiber reinforced polymer composite structures. Uh, in our last module, that means the third module, uh, we have been discussing the macro mechanics of lamina and uh, actually we understood uh, the, uh, the stress strain relationship of a lamina uh, with reference to the principal material axis as well as with reference to the global axis and uh, we understood the influence of uh, the direction dependent stiffness uh, of lamina on the stress strain behavior. And especially uh, we understood how uh, this behavior is different from that of uh, isotropic materials and uh, especially uh, like uh, the existence of uh, coupling terms like uh, shear normal response coupling terms. Even the uh, normal normal response term in orthotropic lamina is different from that in uh, isotropic material. So, we understood also uh, the influence of uh, the fiber angle on, uh, on this stress strain behavior on these properties uh, and uh, we, we discussed that what is the what are the importance of understanding the behavior of lamina uh, in the uh, design of a laminate. For example, suppose we want to design a laminate uh, and uh, the requirement is such that the laminate uh, should have a good stiffness along x. Therefore, we must put some of the lamina whose fibers are directed along x that means 0 degree, okay, 0 degree fibers. But we having known that uh, those lamina are actually weak in the transverse direction. Therefore, if the requirement is also that in the transverse direction we must have a good stiffness, we must also place some uh, lamina with 90 degree fiber orientation. Okay. And what is the what will, what is the number of 0 degree and 90 degree lamina that depends upon what is the uh, stiffness requirement. Suppose the uh, stiffness in the x and y direction uh, required are equal, then we must put equal number of 0 and 90 degree lamina. Suppose in addition to that, we also need a, the need the laminate to have a good shear resistance, then we must put some 45 degree fiber orientation lamina, because we have uh, understood that the shear resistance or the shear modulus is maximum when the fibers are oriented at an angle of 45 degree. And how many number of such lamina will be included in the laminate that is again decided by what is the kind of stiffness required. Okay. So, having understood that, now another important aspect of laminate design is that we also uh, need to know how a laminate performs under load, whether subjected to a load, uh, whether it is safe. Okay. Therefore, we must also know the strength of a laminate. Now, because the lamina number of lamina actually uh, stack together to form a laminate, therefore, the strength of laminate is strength of a laminate is definitely uh, decided by the strength of the uh, lamina uh, comprising that laminate. Therefore, it is important to understand the strength of a lamina. So, in this module, we will basically try to understand uh, the strength of a lamina. Okay. Now, please uh, note that uh, this, is, this is again under ma macro mechanics of lamina. Therefore, uh, the strength uh, the strength failure theories wha what we will be discussing uh, is also under macro mechanics meaning that uh, we will not uh, consider the individual constituents of the lamina like in even in the uh, uh, stiffness stress strain relationship also we have considered the lamina to be homogeneous here also we will consider the lamina to be homogeneous and we will consider macro mechanics failure theory. Now, suppose wh what do you mean uh, mean by strength of a lamina suppose we have a lamina suppose we have a lamina and the lamina is subjected to say So, this is the analysis axis x y okay. and this is of course, 1 2 any general lamina which is subjected to suppose it is subjected to a stress along x sigma x. So, you would like to know we would like to know what is the sigma x at failure or in other words 
what is the maximum value of sigma x it can withstand before it fails or it could be it could be then sigma y. So, you would be interested to know what is the sigma y at failure. Similarly, it could also be subjected to say shear tau x y and we will be interested to know what is the maximum in plane shear stress it can withstand before it fails. So, this is what exactly is the strength of a lamina. Now, we have it could also be that they could also uh, the it may not be always a single stress it could be all these stresses acting together okay? all these stresses acting together combined stresses. Okay. What combination of these stresses leads to lead to the failure? So, this is what exactly we mean by the strength of a lamina. We need to know the uh, that what is the maximum stress a single stress or a combination of stresses it can actually withstand before it fails. Okay. Uh, again it is uh, it is under macro mechanics okay therefore uh, the failure theories will be uh, considering is uh, basically considering the lamina to be uh, homogeneous also this uh, it is actually mostly phenomenological approach that means there are two types of approaches in the failure, failure theories uh, in this this is phenomenological approach where uh, we, we are concerned with the you know the phenomenon and what is the consequence we do not go into much of its cause like we are not uh, a lamina subjected to load it fails. Okay. Suppose, we want to know what is the strength of a lamina what we will do is you take a lamina and suppose we load it in UTM okay, and we look at the stress strain curve suppose it fails at this. Okay. So, this is the failure point. So, this stress is the Failure, failure this is the failure stress okay the, or this is the strength of that particular lamina now how this failure has taken place we are not going into the mechanisms like what happens is suppose in if we consider because the lamina is actually made of uh, uh, fiber as well as matrix so there are uh, many localized failures like so when the lamina is loaded maybe one of the fiber fails okay but failure of one fiber does not necessarily mean that the lamina has failed now that failure uh, fiber breakage may lead to fiber matrix debonding similarly there may be matrix crack that, that matrix crack may lead to delamination okay so these are all local failures and these are uh, a combined effect of all these actually leads to a the failure of a laminate, but in this phenomenological approach in this macroscopic failure theory we are not discussing this that is what is the macroscopic failure theory. Here the main objective is actually to establish a uh, mathematical expressions which can which can actually uh, correlate with the actual failure points. So, it is more of like uh, fitting the data therefore, in that way it is actually kind of criterion it is a failure criterion more than a theory it is a failure criterion. Okay. So, we will discuss uh, this uh, failure theories defined failure theories okay. and we will also have a comparison and then finally, in this module we will also see the hydrothermal stresses in a lamina. Okay. So, coming to the strength failure theories of lamina. 
So, the philosophy of the uh, strain based failure theory is same as what we have learned in the case of isotropic material. I think uh, all of us have uh, in our first course in solid mechanics, we have uh, studied the failure theories like maximum normal stress theory, maximum shear stress theory, distortion energy theory. So, the philosophy is same. Okay? That means, we find out the maximum stress and compare that with the corresponding strength. Okay? That is the philosophy is same, but there is a significant difference uh, between the isotropic materials and the uh, orthotropic materials. Like in isotropic material, we have only two strength parameters. We know what are those. Uh, suppose we take a say we take any object made of isotropic material and it is subjected to say any kind of load. What we do is we find out what are the principal stresses because this principal stress sigma 1 happens to be the maximum normal stress. Okay? And then we also find out what is the maximum shear stress and what we do with that? If the material is a brittle material, if it is a brittle material then what we do is we check whether sigma y is less than sorry whether sigma y is less than the ultimate tensile strength of that material or if it is a ductile material then we check that maximum shear stress is less than the shear stress at yield. Okay. Therefore, basically there are two parameters in isotropic materials strength parameters one is ultimate tensile strength or yield point strength and the shear strength. Okay. However, in some cases there are some materials where that uh, tensile strength is not equal to the compression strength say for example, cast iron. Okay. In that case we, we use three strength parameters, okay. but in most of the cases materials like steel we go with two strength parameters okay. uh, the, uh, that is the normal strength and the shear strength. Okay. Also as I told just now that principal stress or strain and the maximum shear stress are compared with the corresponding strength. The reason is here it does not matter uh, any, any uh, object which is subjected to generalized say load okay, any uh, generalized loading. So, we find out what is the principal stress. Okay. Suppose this is the direction of maximum principal stress and maybe this is the direction of minimum principal stress. Okay. Now, the strength of this uh, isotropic material are independent of direction. Therefore, it does not matter in which direction we load, we can find out the direction uh, principal stress and then equate that to the corresponding strength because strength is same in all the directions okay. or say we find out the maximum shear stress and equate that to the corresponding shear strength because that is also same in all the directions. So, things are much simpler in isotropic material. Uh, uh, on the other hand, uh, if you look at the orthotropic material, strengths are actually direction dependent like stiffness, strengths are direction dependent. Like say for example, the longitudinal tensile strength of a lamina is far higher compared to uh, the transverse tensile strength. I think uh, we know that for a lamina the stiffness in the longitudinal direction E 1 is greater than E 2. The strength here uh, the, the longitudinal tensile strength also is greater than the uh, transverse tensile strength. The reason is what is longitudinal tensile strength? This is the tensile strength along 1. This is the longitudinal tensile strength. Okay. And what is the transverse tensile strength? Strength along direction 2. Okay. Now, the because the fibers are laid along direction 1, the fibers are very strong and stiff in the longitudinal direction. Therefore, the strength of the lamina in direction 1 in the longitudinal tensile strength is actually decided by the strength of the fiber. On the other hand, in the transverse direction, it is not the fiber, but the fibers are bonded by impregnated the matrix. Therefore, it is actually dominated by the matrix and hence the strength in the transverse direction is less compared to that in the longitudinal direction. So, therefore, the directions are also uh, I mean the strengths are also direction dependent and the transverse tensile strength is the weakest and then we have also in plane shear strength. So, the directions 
depending upon the directions, so the strengths are different. Okay, therefore the strengths are direction dependent, and it is not possible to measure strength for all possible direction. What does it mean? Suppose we have a lamina. Okay. Suppose we have a lamina. Now, if I load it in this direction, it has a strength. Now, if I just rotate the lamina by 90 degree and apply load, it is different. Suppose I rotate it by 45 degree, apply load, it is different. Therefore, the strengths are different and it is not possible to measure strength for all orientations. Okay? I mean you can think it think of it like this if, if you have a lamina you may load it in this direction you may load it in this direction you may load it any other angle the strengths are different and it is not possible to measure. So, how to then specify the strength of a lamina. Okay? It is therefore important to know the stresses in the principal material direction like as I no, what are, what are principal material direction? I think we have already defined it in our last model. This 1 and 2, 1 parallel to fiber, 2 perpendicular to the fiber, 1 is known as longitudinal direction, 2 is known as transverse direction and this 1, 2 is the principal material direction that we have discussed in our last class, last module. principal material direction. Okay? Uh, therefore, uh, it is not possible to find out the uh, strength in all the directions. Therefore, it is important that we know the stresses in the principal material directions because in the principal material direction we may specify the strength. So, this is uh, the difference while addressing the strength failure theories for orthotropic material this is the difference compared to that in the isotropic material. Okay. Now, so we, we, we understood that uh, we know that in case of isotropic material we have 2 or maximum 3 strength parameters, but in the case of an orthotropic material you have 5 strength parameters. What are those? In with reference to the principal material directions. Okay. Again I am writing 1, 2 are the principal material directions. Okay. So, with reference to that sigma 1 T u that means, if you load this laminate in the tensile mode in this along 1 the maximum stress it can withstand is sigma 1 T u which is known as the ultimate longitudinal tensile strength okay? sigma 1 T u this is tensile. Suppose you load this laminate along direction 1, but now in compression the maximum stress it can withstand is sigma 1 C u C stands for compression. Okay? So, they are of course, different. Suppose you load this lamina along direction 2 in tensile with tensile stress, the maximum tensile stress it can withstand is sigma 2 T u, which is known as transverse tensile strength. And if we load in the transverse direction by compression stress, the maximum stress it can withstand is sigma 2 C u. Okay. Similarly, if you load this lamina with in plane shear in the principal material direction, the maximum shear stress it can withstand before it fails is sigma 1 to u is the ultimate in plane shear strength. Okay. So, these are the 5 strength parameters you know these are the 5 strength parameters which are required to, to specify the strength in an orthotropic lamina. Okay? So, how do we get this? Suppose we, we take a laminate 
oh, sorry, we take a lamina and we load it in UTM and we draw the stress strain curve till failure. This is the failure point. So, this is sigma 1 d u okay. and corresponding strain at failure is sigma 1 epsilon 1 t u and the slope of this curve is I think you, you already know that this is e 1 because the lamina is loaded along direction 1. Okay. Similarly, if you take uh, a lamina and subject it to of course, uh, I mean you cannot load a lamina like this, it has to have uh, at least a minimum thickness to withstand the compression strength uh, compression stress. So, maybe this is the failure point. So, this is sigma 1 C u and epsilon 1 C u and Young's modulus E 1. So, you take a lamina and load it in the transverse direction in the tensile in, in a actually this uh, this is much less. So, this is sigma 1 T u and the corresponding epsilon 1 sorry sigma 2 T u and this is epsilon 2 T u and this slope is E 2. Similarly, we can load in the transverse direction, but in compression and we can at failure this is sigma 2 C u and the corresponding epsilon 2 C u and this is E 2. So, in all these cases uh, one assumption here is that it is it is linear till failure. Okay. Again we are not uh, considering what actually happens when we say that is subjected to compression load and it fails what exactly happens inside whether it is fiber micro buckling or uh, fiber matrix debonding those things we are not considering that is why it is macroscopic failure theories. However, in microscopic uh, failure approaches all these things are actually considered to understand what is the mechanism of different type of failure. Similarly, we can subject this to uh, in plane shear. tau 1 2 and at failure this is the tau 1 2 u and the corresponding strain is gamma 1 2 u and the slope is g 1 2. Now, these strengths are different you know if you try to uh, see that um, suppose uh, this is the stress along 1 and this is the stress along 2 1 toward the material direction. Please do not confuse uh, these two principal these stresses because all of us are actually acquainted with as writing sigma 1 sigma 2 as the principal stresses, but here when I am writing sigma 1 sigma 2 these are the material direction stresses. Okay. So, now suppose only sigma 1 is applied, what is the maximum stress it can withstand? Naturally, sigma 1 T u. Okay. Therefore, suppose only sigma 2 is applied, what is the maximum stress it can withstand? Sigma 2 T u. Suppose only sigma C uh, I mean compression stress sigma 1 C is applied, the maximum stress it can withstand is sigma 1 C u in the negative. Okay. 
suppose only uh, sigma 2 is applied okay, in the compression. So, this is sigma 2 C u. Okay. Now, uh, this is a case when only sigma 1 is applied. This is a case when only sigma 2 is applied. Similarly, here only sigma 1 compression, sigma 2 compression. But in actual loading, it may not be like this. It is actually a combination of sigma 1, sigma 2 or even the combination of sigma 1, sigma 2, tau 1, 2. Therefore, we need to know subjected to combined loading how the failure takes place. So, this is the objective of developing this uh, the macroscopic failure theories. Okay. So, typically uh, say for graphite epoxy, these are the we already have seen that the Young's modulus along longitudinal direction E 1, transverse direction E 2, nu 1 to is the in plane portion ratio I mean nu 1 to is the major portion ratio, g 1 to is the uh, the shear modulus okay, where uh, 1 2 are the material directions. I am writing it every time because okay, 1 2 are the principal it has nothing to do with principal stresses. Okay. I am writing it every time, so that you become acquainted to this okay. 1 2 actually represents the principal material direction. Okay. Now, another striking difference between the uh, when we apply failure theories in uh, isotropic material that we always try to find out the principal stresses and the maximum shear stress, because the sigma uh, the, the major principal stress is the maximum normal stress. Okay. And definitely, if it fails due to normal stress, failure will be because of that. But this is not true, as we have uh, mentioned just uh, uh, that in the previous slide that in in iso in 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 orthotropic lamina, it is the stresses along the material axis which are important, not not the it is the stresses along the principal material direction which are important, not the principal stresses. Okay, the reason is this because the strengths are direction dependent. You can see that the longitudinal tensile strength of a typical see this may vary like it, it depends upon what kind of graphite epoxy what is the volume fraction but this is a typical for a graphite epoxy these are the properties these are the strength properties okay now suppose uh, we have a graphite epoxy lamina say so it is subjected to This is say this is um, say say this is five hundred mega Pascal and uh, in this uh, it is say eighty mega Pascal. Okay. So, now because there is no uh, you know there is no uh, shear stress, so these are the principal stresses. Okay. So, this is the major principal stress, this is the minor principal stress. Now, if you try to see here that this 500 mega Pascal is actually less than, but that does not mean that it will not fail, Bec it will fail because in the other direction it is greater than sigma 2 T u. Okay. Therefore, since the uh, stress, uh, strengths are direction dependent, I mean the it is uh, that principal uh, stress does not have much bearing in the analysis of the uh, strength of a lamina. It is important that we actually find out the stresses in the material direction and then compare those stresses with the corresponding strength in the material direction. This is how it is. Okay. Uh, now, the strength properties in the material directions are actually determined by conducting tests, okay, laboratory tests and we, we find out the strength properties. Now, each of these 5 strengths represent a failure mode. For example, uh, say sigma 1 T u, this is the longitudinal tensile. So, this actually is, is associated with mostly fiber failure because it is the uh, tensile strength in the longitudinal direction this is associated with fiber failure. Similarly, sigma 1 C u fiber buckling okay, because it is longitudinal compression. Sigma 2 T u 
is actually matrix cracking ok. Sigma 2 C u it is matrix failure then even tau 1 2 that shear it, it may lead to uh, fiber matrix debonding or matrix failure ok. Therefore, each of these actually represents a different failure, but we are not actually uh, looking into this mechanisms of this uh, failure ok. Uh, as, as we have discussed that we can actually conduct tests independently and the strengths could be known with respect to the principal material direction. So, these are the strengths with respect to the principal material direction sigma 1 T u, sigma 1 C u, sigma 2 C u, sigma 2 T u and tau 1 T u ok. So, what is done is the applied stresses are actually transformed to principal material axis and then compared to the appropriate strengths ok. Suppose, you have a lamina and it is subjected to stress like this. Now, we do not find out the principal stress what we find out is we find out what is the stress in the principal material direction 1 ok, what is the stress in the principal material direction 2, what is the shear stress in the material plane 1 2 and then uh, compare them with the corresponding strengths uh, to assess whether it is safe or whether it fails ok. Now, even though the strengths are actually determined conducting a single test applying a, 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 a one particular stress at a time, but actual stress fields are mostly biaxial or triaxial ok. Even you will appreciate that even if you apply uniaxial stress, but not along the material axis that might lead to biaxial stress. For example, suppose you have a lamina ok, this is x y and this is 1 and 2 this theta. Suppose, you apply only sigma x this is the uniaxial load. Now, this will lead to perhaps sigma 1, sigma 2 and tau 1 2 if you perform the stress transformation the sigma x itself will lead to the existence of all sigma 1, sigma 2 and tau 1 2 that means all the two normal stress and one shear stress, two normal stress and one shear stress in the material axis. So, the uniaxial stress not in the principal material direction uh, may lead to multiaxial stress along the principal material axis ok. Now, failure mechanism in composites vary greatly with material properties and type of loading just now we have discussed. So, there are uh, now a failure may be because of the combination of all these different modes ok and interaction between different mechanisms make it really difficult to accurately predict the strengths and therefore, a failure criteria is actually needed. Now, because we are discussing macro mechanical failure criteria, so the macro mechanical failure theories are proposed how by extending and adopting the isotropic uh, the failure theories which are applied to isotropic material, but it, it takes into account the anisotropy in stiffness and strength of the composite, but the philosophy remains same ok. So, so this is why the a failure theory is required basically to uh, will extend the same philosophy which are actually applied for isotropic material, but the anisotropy in stiffness and strength will be taken into account. So, there are different types of uh, failure uh, basically the failure theories are macroscopic failure theories are actually divided into two types non interactive or independent theories interactive or uh, interactive theories. Now, non interactive means uh, suppose you, you take a laminate and it is subjected to load and because of that suppose sigma 1 is the stress in the material direction 1, sigma 2 is the stress in the material direction 2 and of course, tau 1 2 is the uh, say the shear stress in uh, principal material plane. Now, non-interactive non theories it is assumed that there is no interaction among the stresses. Just now I, I we discussed that if we apply sigma 1 then the failure point is this sigma 1 T u. If we apply sigma 2 the failure point is sigma 2 T u. So, these are the two failure points ok, but what happens if, if you apply sigma 1 and sigma 2 together ok, because the failure is actually influenced by both the sigma 1 and sigma 2 ok, there is interactions. So, the non interactive failure theories do not take into account those I mean 
uh, it takes the individual failure independently. The interactions between the different stresses are not taken into account. On the other end, the interactive theories take into account the interactions uh, between the different stresses which leads to the failure. We will see the more details uh, when we actually discuss this. So, under non-interactive theories, there are maximum stress theory and maximum strain theory and there are a number of interactive theories which are actually put forward at different point of time like psi hill theory, then Hoffman failure criterion, then psi u theory. We will discuss all of this all this one by one. Let us first uh, discuss maximum stress failure criterion. Okay. So, here if we have a lamina and suppose the lamina is subjected to say sigma x, suppose the state of stress is at uh, the lamina is subjected to sigma x, sigma y and tau x y. Okay. So, what we do is we find out the stresses with reference to the principal material reaction. Okay. So, with respect to the local x y the stresses are sigma x sigma y tau x y and with respect to the principal material reaction 1 2 the stresses are sigma 1 sigma 2 and tau 1 2 okay so using the stress transformation this is nothing but the stress transformation matrix we can actually find out what are the stresses in the material axis sigma 1 sigma 2 and tau 1 2 now that the strengths with reference to the material axis are known the five strength parameters Therefore, the maximum stress criterion tells us that the lamina is safe if the stresses in the material axis, each uh, stress in the material axis actually does not exceed the corresponding strength. What does it corresponding strength means? Suppose sigma 1 is positive. If sigma 1 is positive, it must be less than sigma 1 T u. That means, it must be less than the longitudinal tensile strength. Okay. If sigma 1 is compressive that is negative, then its magnitude must be less than the longitudinal compression strength. Okay. If sigma 2 is positive, then its magnitude must be less than the transverse tensile strength. If sigma 2 is negative, its magnitude must be less than the transverse compressive strength. And tau 1 2, the sign of tau 1 2 in the material axis does not have any bearing I think we have discussed in the last class. So, I will tell that again therefore, the magnitude of shear stress does not matter I mean the sign of shear stress does not have much bearing uh, I mean does not have any bearing in the material axis. Therefore, the shear stress in the material axis must be less than the corresponding shear strength. Okay. So, you can see this is actually though it is a uh, maximum stress failure criterion it is actually it consists of 5 criteria you know this is one criteria, this is another criteria, this is third, this is fourth and this is fifth criteria. So, there are five sub criteria that means, there are five different modes possible. Number one longitudinal tensile failure, number two longitudinal compression failure, number three transverse tensile failure, number four transverse compression failure number 5 in plane shear failure. Okay. So, there is no interaction okay. the each term is compared individually that is why it is called non interactive theory each term is compared uh, I mean individually that means, sigma 1 is compared to sigma 1 T u or sigma 1 is compared to sigma 1 C u then sigma 2 is compared to sigma 2 T u or sigma 2 if it is negative is compared to sigma 2 C u and tau 1 to is compared to tau 1 to u. So, individually each of these strength, uh, stresses are compared with the corresponding strength parameter 
and the interactions among the strings are not considered therefore, it is non interactive theory. Okay. Now, uh, let us try to understand that using maximum stress theory, what is the off axis tensile strength? Suppose, we have a lamina okay. again uh, 1 2 is the principal material direction or, or axis x y is the global axis okay it is also called local axis okay so what is the off axis tensile strength suppose this lamina is subjected to uniaxial tensile stress sigma x so, what is the maximum value of sigma x at failure? So, this is the off axis tensile strength. Okay. Why it is called off axis? Because it is along the x axis. What is the tensile strength along 1? That is sigma 1 Tu. Okay. So, what we do is, so the state of stress is sigma x and sigma y is 0, tau x y is 0. Therefore, this is the state of stress with respect to x y and we can immediately find out what are the material axis stresses using this transformation where C and A stand for cos theta and sin theta. Therefore, sigma 1 is equal to sigma x cos square theta, sigma 2 is equal to sigma x sin square theta and tau 1 2 is equal to minus sigma x sin theta cos theta. Therefore, applying maximum stress theory we know we have 5 conditions. Now, because sigma x is positive, so cos square theta is positive therefore, this is the first condition we will have to check. That means, sigma x cos square theta in the limit would be equal to sigma 1 T u. As long as it is less than sigma 1 T u, it is safe. Okay. Again, this is also positive, therefore, this condition this leads to sigma x sin square theta is equal to sigma 2 T u, and this is minus sigma x. So, this is the condition because it is negative. So, I mean, but uh, there is no uh, uh, bearing on of sign of shear stress in the material axis. Therefore, this leads to sigma x sin theta cos theta is equal to tau 1 to u. Okay. Therefore, which implies that uh, sigma x is equal to sigma 1 T u by cos square theta or sigma x equal to sigma 2 T u by sin square theta or sigma x is equal to tau 1 to u by sin theta cos theta. So, these are the three conditions which needs to be satisfied. Okay. So, violating any one of these conditions will be failure that means, it should be less I have written equal to that means, it is the limiting case. Okay. Now, naturally what will be the value of sigma x that is decided by the value of theta. Suppose, we try to see what are the strengths versus theta. Say this is theta sigma x. Okay. Now, if we try to plot this first one at theta is equal to 0 cos 0 is equal to 1 therefore, this is sigma 1 T u okay. sigma 1 T u I think this sigma 1 T 
u. As theta increases, cos theta value increases okay? and we know that at cos 90 it is 0. Suppose this is 90, this is say 45. Therefore, the curve actually goes to infinity at 90. Okay? Now, suppose we plot this at theta is equal to 0, sin theta is 0, therefore it is infinite. At theta is equal to 90, what is this value? This is sigma 2 T u. Okay? Therefore, suppose this is sigma 2 T u. at theta is equal to 90 and this line actually goes to it goes to infinity at theta is equal to 0 it becomes infinity. Okay. And then this last equation both theta is equal to 0 and theta is equal to 90 it is infinity and at theta is equal to 45 this is uh, so it is uh, So, this is like this, this, this is quality, this is just I mean not to scale. Okay. So, this is, uh, this is actually uh, longitudinal tensile and this is transverse tensile and this is shear. So, this curve is, this curve is longitudinal tensile, this is shear and this is transverse tensile. Now, if I take the minimum of these three, sorry, this is longitudinal tensile, this is shear and this is transverse tensile. So, if I take minimum of these three, then uh, you can see that Let me redraw this actually, this has become clumsy. Okay. Okay. So, this is shear, this is longitudinal tensile, and this is transverse tensile. So, if I take this, so this is the now what does it mean? That means, as you move from 0 to 90 degree, this is the maximum value of sigma x it can withstand. At theta is equal to 0, the value of sigma x is sigma 1 T u. At theta is equal to 90, the value of sigma x is sigma 2 T u. That is understood. Okay? And in between, it takes these values. Okay? So, this is the, now if you can clearly see for a small value of theta near 0, the failure is because of longitudinal tensile which is actually 5. Okay. And after that up to certain angle it is actually dominated by shear and as you move away from 45 towards 90 it is actually the transverse tensile. Okay. So, you can clearly see that even uh, the off axis strength of a lamina we can see that there are three different modes of failure depending upon the uh, value of theta. Okay. So, at theta is equal to 0 sigma x is sigma 1 T u, theta is equal to 90, sigma x is sigma 2 T u okay? and this is understood. I mean if theta is equal to 0 means this is the lamina okay? and this is because if you conduct the test this is what is sigma 1 T u at theta is equal to 90 means either you can put it like this and this is what it is. 
So, this is sigma 2 T u. Okay. Uh, now, let us take a small example, very quick example to understand that uh, how we actually decide the failure of a lamina using maximum stress theory. Suppose, uh, we have a lamina which is subjected to uh, a state of the subjected to stress sigma x equal to 4 p, sigma y is equal to minus 6 p and tau x y is equal to 8 p. That means, it is subjected to all these three components of stresses sigma x, sigma y and tau x y. Okay. So, what we do? So, immediately we can uh, find out what are the stresses with respect to the material axis 1, 2. Now, given that for this uh, graphite epoxy, these are the strength parameters. These are typical strength parameters I have taken from a book. I mean, as I told that the strength of uh, this graphite epoxy will be dependent on like the what is the fiber strength, what is the matrix strength, what is the volume fraction, but this is a typical graphite epoxy for this particular lamina. Okay. So, longitudinal tensile strength, longitudinal compression, transverse tensile, transverse compression and in plane shear. Okay. So, what we do is first we find out what are the metal axis stresses. Now, what we need to determine is we need to find out the value of p so that the lamina is safe. Okay. So, first we find out what are the material axis stresses using the transformation matrix. We put theta is equal to we put theta is equal to 60 degree and these are the material axis stresses in terms of p. Okay. Now, when you put these values of sigma 1, sigma 2 and tau 1, 2. So, sigma 1 is equal to 3.4 p, sigma 2 is equal to minus 5.4 p, sigma and tau 1, 2 is equal to minus 8.3 p. When we rearrange this, we get therefore, what is the condition of failure violating any one of these will lead to the failure. So, out of these three uh, out of this uh, conditions, which one will be first violated you can clearly see that because the p has to be positive it is written in the example itself therefore the max as soon as p is more than 11.4 into 10 to the power 6 this condition is violated then the laminate lamina will fail okay because if this is violated anyway this will be violated so this is the minimum value of positive value of p which uh, uh, I mean, I mean the if the if p is more than 11.4, then the lamina will fail. Therefore, the maximum value of p will be this 11.4 into 10 to the power 6. Now, using this maximum stress theory, we could find out that this is the maximum value of p. We can also see which condition is first violated. This third condition. What is this third condition? It is actually shear. Okay. Therefore the lamina we can say that the lamina will actually fail due to shear. Okay. So, next uh, let us uh, try to uh, determine the off axis shear strength of a 60 degree say glass epoxy lamina. Okay. What is off axis shear strength? That means, you have a uh, lamina 60 degree glass epoxy lamina it is subjected to pure shear it is subjected to pure shear and we want to know what is the maximum shear stress tau x y it can withstand before it fails. So, this is the state of stress only tau x y is not 0 sigma x sigma y is equal to 0 therefore, from this state of stress with respect to x y we can immediately find out what are the stresses in the material axis using this stress transformation matrix. Okay. So, we get that the sigma 1 is equal to 0.866 tau x y, sigma 2 is negative minus 0.866 tau x y and uh, tau 1 2 is minus 0.5 tau x y. Again we put this in the 
maximum stress theory the condition for safety is that none of these condition should be we could be violated okay if any one of these condition is violated then it fails now rearranging this we get this these are the conditions okay now what we can see here is suppose tau xy is positive okay suppose tau xy is positive if tau xy is positive the maximum value of tau xy could be 70 mega pascal but suppose tau xy is negative the maximum value of tau xy is minus 5.7 okay because if it is if tau xy is negative and suppose it is 6 then it violates this condition suppose it is 5.72 it violates this condition okay so here we get two conditions number one if tau xy is positive the maximum value it can have is 70 mega pascal on the other hand if tau xy is negative the maximum value it can have is 5.7 mega pascal now what is positive and negative this is say tau xy is positive if we reverse the sign this is negative okay this is negative tau xy so that means if we try to find out what is the off axis shear strength of a lamina of an angle lamina we need to specify with, re with reference to the sign of the shear stress if it is positive in this case it is 70 if it is negative it is 5.7 mega pascal okay therefore the sign of shear stress is very very important now why it so so happens you can understand from here suppose this is the lamina okay it is subjected to say positive shear stress tau xy pure shear okay now this positive shear stress is actually say for example suppose it is say in this case say theta is equal to say 45 degree say it may not be 45 degree then this tau xy is equivalent to equal and opposite i think you have studied this in your strength of material that pure shear is equivalent to equal and opposite principal stresses in the in a plane 45 degree okay so now if this lamina is lamina is subjected to tau xy it translates to that it, it has a tensile stress along this and a compression stress along this now look at in the material direction i mean if it is 45 degree this tensile stress what a very high magnitude of this tensile stress could be actually which the lamina can withstand because it is along the fiber direction okay but suppose this shear stress is in the opposite direction okay in that case this translates to this is equivalent to now what happens is this tensile stress is actually in the transverse direction to the lamina okay and we know that this transverse tensile stress tensile strength is much less compared to transverse tensile strength is much less compared to longitudinal tensile stress therefore in this case the failure will be because of the transverse tensile. So, when we have actually now I have taken this example with 45 degree it may not be 45 degree. So, it even at 60 degree what happens is this is what happens in one case the uh, the tensile stress is along the fiber therefore, it can withstand a very high magnitude of stress in another case the tensile stress is transverse to the fiber where it is very very weak. Okay. So, it cannot take much load therefore, in this case the off axis shear strength is much lower compared to the off axis shear strength when the sign is changed. But the failure is because of the transverse tensile. If you see in this case what is the failure here? This is actually transverse tensile because the second condition okay. here it is actually shear. Okay. Therefore, this is why the sign of shear stress is important 
in determination of the off axis shear strength of a lamina. Okay. So, if somebody uh, wants to know what is the maximum shear stress a, a, an angle lamina can withstand in the x y plane, we will have to ask that it depends upon the direction of the shear stress. If it is in one direction suppose in pos positive, its shear strength is different compared to if it is negative. Okay. So, I will stop here today. Thank you.